Squash XL Pro is an elite team that work hard to train, play and run squash events on our journey to climb the world rankings. Like, subscribe, comment, pick up some of our merch on Teespring. underway with just the second men's quarterfinals of the placemakers Waikato Squash Open and you have John Ascot in the red up against Wills Donnelly oh, just pushing that one a little bit too tight now these two players over the last couple of times they've played we had four games to Joel at the Morrisville Open and it was five games the tournament prior to that at the Royal Oak Open so there's a lot of pressure on both of them here they both know wins can go either way and this is probably going to be the match today which has the potential to go the longest in time and the winner of this particular match will play the winner of uh, Evan Williams against Sean Wigan which is up next actually so they know everybody here in this tournament knows each other's play we don't have anybody necessarily new coming through you can guarantee that both players are going to get to almost every single ball around the court Joel Ask got extremely fit Wills Donnelly just knows his lines around the court very well. He's really improved his fitness game. And was that question there about not being not up? that 4-1 lead gets a little bit daunting even though it's only in the first game nice change of pace slowing it down certainly a bit different to the frantic pace that we had in the previous match where Luanda Chalisi came out the winner over Glenn Templeton and straight, albeit quite tight at times. Just pushing it too much. A little bit of a tapping on his head. Keep thinking, keep thinking, I guess. Donnelly he has PSA ranking it's a little bit lower than Joel Ascot Wills Donnelly 296 and of course uh, Joel Ascot 209 a number of uh, the Kiwi players just improving nicely with these PSA events that we've had satellites and challenges such as this event remembering that not so long not so long ago Just, just, yeah, so just gushing there on both players and eventually we've got the lip and Will's not overly happy with that no, no he's given the point <laughs> well, a little bit of confusion, but we got there in the end. Yeah, so a bit of uh, good sportsmanship there from uh, Joel Ascot, but um, yeah, it was a little bit confusing. And
Nice, nicely picked up. Back into the rally now, Joel. Yeah, good play. Keeps himself in the point, keeps himself in the game. To that back wall players are going to have a little bit of a problem not every shot however on that occasion you just there you go again yeah using the lift nicely Scott had a couple of problems there on the back wall, particularly in the backhand side where the ball just didn't seem to take it all. But he manages to recover with that point. Nice work there from uh, Ascot coming back, working his way back into this, and uh, just one point, the deficit now, after being down three or four. Heard the call there, no let from uh, the officials. And two point buffer again. A little bit of support coming through for Will Stonley. Thank you for that one. Thank you for that, Brian. If anybody wants to come through with any support, feel free. Let's see, Will Stonley is really seems to be playing to a specific game plan in this match so far. Yeah, if he had been just a little bit more patient. Just played it too tight and too close to the tin on that occasion. It's a really good shot. Just enough underspin on it to hit the ball and stay low. 
And the first game ball of this match. And good to have Nick Russell coming through supporting Wills. Anybody else leave their message? Support their player. punch that one away across court. We're pretty impressed with the anticipation so far that we've seen from uh, Will Stonley. But on that occasion, a good shot from Joe Lars got to punch the ball across court. Let him back in on that very long rally. And Will Stonely be very disappointed on that. He's given away a couple of game balls. Joe Lascon feels that he's in with a chance now, no doubt. That's the call. You can see the discussions there from Will Stonley about the let, no let. And again, that is Joel Asker just inching his way back into this match. Probably the pressure. So we are having <laughs> Yeah, so we're uh, explanations all round and uh, in the end we continue with Wills Donnelly wanting one and Joel Ascot wanting one just to take it to 10 apiece. I'm not sure who's really the pressure is on on this particular point. That's a ferocious rally so far. And there we go. 10 all, no arguing on that one though. And you've got to remember, folks, this is just the first game. 
<laughs> we're at 11.10 and we have been playing for 14 minutes. It was always going to be the long match uh, scheduled out of all these men's quarterfinals. We've even had Emma Miller come through. It looks as though she was in a, a uh, change of games in her match. She just poked her head through to see what was going on. She's actually playing on a different court. other who knows when this particular game will ever finish it is the first game a little under third or the fourth or the fifth Sometime today. yeah we're up to uh, 15 nearly 16 minutes nice boast there that's oh that's good that's very good yeah. nice shot to hit at this point of the match and this is should be one more game ball. Well, it is another game ball. I'm just trying to figure out how many it's been. It's been a lot. Oh, got to be careful about that ball. Just in the corners, and there we go again. with bated breath for that call. Was it a let? Who knows what it was going to be? We got the let call. 17 and a half minutes. That's the first game. <laughs> well, after a 17 minute first game between these two players, Wills Donnelly in the darker t shirt and Joel Ascot in the red t shirt, we're yes. underway again. And it was a first game victory 13 11 to Wills Donnelly. And I'm sure you can expect much more of that again. As already this first rally is lengthy. A very lengthy and competitive rally already. And Ben Grinrod, great to have you coming through. I'm sure Ben, you used to do have uh, well these sort of rallies yourself. Both of these players very happy to lift the ball, use a lob as well. Interesting. And just about tripping over each other. Got a good crowd in. There's plenty of other courts being used as well. Yeah, well played. Just Good patience there by Joel Ascot in that particular point. And just a reminder, some of the other matches we've already had confirmed completed. Caitlin Watts, uh, that was in three over Sophie Hodges. Natalie says in five over Lauren Clark. And uh, Lawamba Chilisi over Glenn Templeton. That was in straight as well. So those are the quarterfinal results so far today. Recovery 
Green from Joe Last got off the ground and ready to go again. There you go. That's a good point. Just possibly stepped it up a level, but we're only in the early stages of this, the second game. So don't forget to come through and give us a message about who you think will win. Certainly a lot of support so far for Wills Donnelly. Keep it up. And I don't know if you, I don't know if you can call much. So the let called on that one. As we who would be an official uh, Joe Smythe uh, he commented that he really didn't enjoy doing it and no good there he's let him back in I forget the other quarterfinals to come on this court Evan Williams against Sean Wigan and then Timwa Chalisi against Zach Miller, that'll be entertaining. Shooting. And then we have the semi-finals from 6.15 this evening. Of course, the finals early tomorrow afternoon, which should be really entertaining. We've had a lot of people coming in to watch and over 150 entries for all the grades as well. Look at the faces, people. Look at the faces. Who are you going to go with? Whose face told it best? Wheels cut here. The, uh, that door is taking a lot of punishment. The players can't always hear as well. And that's the other thing. It's a very loud court. Sounds ridiculous, but it is a very loud court. When it hits the tin, it's just about deafening. Oh, that's a nice shot. Yeah, that, that's the sort of shot you just want to bring out every now and then and just plastered that one on the forehand. So we go from an absolute winner to an absolute stinker right into the tin. Oh. Oh. Yeah, what we're seeing now, folks, is uh, just a little bit of impatience coming in there. Uh, we've had a few balls going over the wall so far today, and uh, all of the matches completed so far. Oh, nice change of direction. That's that's good play. Got it out in front, and was able to change direction. Good play there from Wills Donnelly after a lengthy rally. He was patient enough to be able to play it down and didn't try and rush it too much. 
And someone who's just come off the court not so long ago, well, actually quite a while ago, because the first game here took 17 minutes, so it was quite a while ago before you came on, Fat Louis. Uh, Luamba Chalisi, uh, congratulations on making it through, uh, defeating Glenn Templeton in a very hard-hitting affair. That the first point of every single game was just bashed the heck out of it. I'm not sure that was the tactics, but it looked that way for a while. Uh, thank you very much for joining me, Louis. Yep, it's good to be back, Dave. Thanks for the introduction. <laughs> I, I, I tell you, though, you and Glenn were hitting the ball hard to start with, certainly in every game. Yeah, I think, um, especially when we went on that forehand side, it was kind of the game of who was going to win on the forehand side. Right. And we both ended up smashing the crap out of it. Yeah, yeah just I mean, straight every did. time. <laughs> yeah. um, until someone got a loose shot and they could block the other one out or go for a kill winner. This is going to sound yeah. silly, but it's a very noisy court. It is, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Does it, is it feel that way on court? I mean, definitely when it hits the tin. Oh, yeah. It's very loud. Um, but no, you don't really, no one really notice that too much on the court. few interesting calls but there's always got to be a few interesting calls between these two the way they play against each other yeah I think um, I would I would definitely be sweating right now if I was having to ref this match yeah um, it is a tough one yeah. um, both players like to take their space in the middle yeah so there's always going to be you know a bit of interference um, and, and particularly their, their last two matches one was a, a four gamer at uh, Morrisman and yeah. then it was a five gamer that we was one they know it's a little bit of rivalry there. Yep. They know the way they play. The only thing I have to say is that Will's Donnelly in the last see it's loud. Um, <laughs> Will's Donnelly in the last year, six months, he has improved out of sight. You know, his yep. game has just taken another step. I don't know what he's done, whether it's fitness or attitude or whatever, but it's certainly improved. Yeah. Yeah, kind of. Uh, Um, yeah, so I think um, just started this year, Will's really made his mark. Um, doing really well in the um, in the Royal Oak tournament. Yeah, yeah, that really um, helped. And then doing pretty well in the Morrisville as well. Well, yeah. The, the unfortunate thing is that we, we've seen uh, Joe just probably get a little bit too upset over some of these things. That, I don't know. I can't see it helping him. Yeah, there's um okay, Well, that, that was probably a more straightforward bet that a record would have come through and would have made a bit of contact there. Yeah, I think I think you're gonna you're gonna find a balance between getting your point across but not being too angry about it. Because when you get angry, you get, um, it doesn't help yourself because it will make no. you play worse, but then it also makes the ref not like you. Like you're most yeah, likely yeah, going to yeah. get worse calls in the future. Yeah. Um, Th this is what happened in the first game. We had uh, Wills with a decent lead, looking as though he was going to win, and he had a number of uh, game points. And we just had uh, Joel just chip away, come back, come back, and just start to... You know, it was almost as if Joel had the advantage, even though he didn't on the scoreboard. Yeah. Well, the problem is now that every let or no let yeah. is going to be questioned. <laughs> yeah. Some uh, nice long rallies here, though, so it's going to be a very interesting match, regardless of who takes this game. But it is a crucial game, this one. Tight squeeze. 
these type screws. Interesting that these two in particular use the lifted ball a lot more than what, say, you and Glenn would have done. I mean, different styles of playing, yep. but they, they use the lifted ball yep. almost as a weapon as well. Yeah, I think Wills is definitely known for um, using an attacking log, um, and it kind of does force Joel to use it a little bit as well, which is good to see. It's good squash. I mean, it's hard to lift Glenn, you know, to lift over him. <laughs> it is, yeah. And as you just heard, two games to love for Wills Donnelly. The first one that was 13-11 and the second 11-9. First game going 17 minutes and the second wasn't too far behind that either. So keep up your comments and your support of whichever player. Thank you very much there, Danny McQueen. Yeah, pretty solid start indeed. Or we'll say, what are we going to go here? Takes time. Nice play. Oh. Oh. Yeah. It's a good rally there, pretty fast yeah. pace. Um. I think the anticipation, like you were saying, the anticipation of Will so far, he, he's mind reading he's yeah. got something going on there yeah. he's uh, working it out and i mean as you said before they both had a lot of court time together this year both having, or having played two matches against each other one one and five one and four um, and when that happens you kind of get to know the other players game a little bit so it seems like wills has caught on uh, maybe he's been doing a little bit of uh, match analysis as well on jobs because he seems to be just reading everything he's doing yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like he's got a specific game plan and then a potential backup if he needs it at the moment, whereas I'm not sure about Joel's game plan in this one. Oh, the unfortunate uh, for Wills, the <laughs> enforced error there. Uh, what was it like on court uh, temperature-wise? It was good, actually. Uh, Wills weren't wet, which is the main problem that this court has right. a lot of the time, especially at the summer year. Um, so that was good. Uh, it's quite, it's quite cold. I guess because okay. we're going into winter now, um, it's definitely more dead than it was a couple of weeks ago. Um, that was probably about a month ago. Right. So, Paul's definitely dying more at the back. Um, yeah, you can see, you can see a couple there. Well, that, that's what I was thinking in your particular match. When the ball hit the back wall, the player would have to rethink their footwork sometimes. Nice shot. But it was almost ha you're having to double. He's got to be very careful there because he's going to, just going to get himself in trouble. It's not going to help him either doing that sort of thing, is it? Yeah, I think that no matter what instance you're in, even if, even if the calls are bad, it's not saying they are here, but yeah, you're not helping yourself just getting angry. Um, it's quite a skill to be able to reset yeah. and just let it go. It is very tough sometimes. Oh, yeah. Well, you're sort of in a little cage uh, with people outside telling you what's good or bad yeah. about what you've seen. where Wills, if he stays patient, can actually just move on a little bit more. Yep. He's got to just do the longest rally he's done in the whole match now. And make no errors if he wants to move forward. Yep. The, the score is definitely in his favour at the moment. He's got that scoreboard pressure being up 2-1. Very tight squash though. Decent lines being hit both sides. Right. Oh. <laughs> 
Yeah, it was, it was a good rally. And the, the impressive aspect there for Joel was that he did keep himself cool and calm and, and kept on going. He didn't try to rush things there. I was just seeing in your match and the previous matches that people would almost have to double check their feet if the ball did hit the back wall because there's a slight uncertainty there how the ball's going to come off. Is it going to come off the way we think it should? Or is, the, is the ball not flying as much or as fast as it would if it was a little bit warmer? Yeah, nah, it's definitely not as quick and not as bouncy. Nice shot. It's um, good job. I also think as soon as, if you play a wide cross, as soon as it hits the side ball, it does take the pace off the ball right. a lot as well. So. I just find it interesting that in the perhaps the last month how somewhere like Royal Oak uh, almost a month ago compared to here has, it, has it changed different. dramatically how things have uh, the temperature and the flight of the ball yeah personally I think so I mean it could be the court as well right. it could be the Hamilton court but from from what I've kind of experienced in the last month of training, it's definitely been a lot colder. Like right. me, actually, me and me and my brother when we were hitting a couple of days ago, I had to play a match with a, with a single dot because it was so cold, it was so dead. Um, I'm not sure if that's just because the courts were at a dead, but right. um, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, everything seems to be dying down at the moment, um, and it is getting colder. So yeah. I assume that the temperature does have something to do with the courts being more dead. Yeah. And uh, this is the first time I've been into the Hamilton squash and tennis club. I played on the tennis courts years ago, but never been inside. And um, I had to be shown the Devoy court. That's a, that's a bit of a hark back to the past, the way it's uh, built there. Yeah. Uh, apparently, it's a very good court to play on. Have you, you played on the Devoy court out the back here? Yeah, I have actually. I played there last year against my brother in the, the same tournament in the final. Um, it wasn't actually too bad. It was towards the end of the year, so it was right. coming up to summer. Um, so it the way it's built warmer, is quite dramatic. It is, yeah. It's, a, it's quite a nice show court. Um, with the seating. Right, yeah. It is annoying how it's not a glass bat, but... I mean, you get a lot of people in there, can't yeah. you? And they are quite high up as well. Like, when you're looking oh, yeah. at the crowd from inside that, the court, it's quite good. They've got their own ref sand as well, up the top. Yeah. It's a busy venue this weekend with over 150 entries, all grades. That's so that's two now that he's uh, put just over the line there for Will Stanley. And the good thing is we haven't, since he uh, hit the ball in anger, we haven't uh, had any queries <laughs> for lets, strokes or anything. And it appears as though we've seen Joe Ascot refocus himself, which what he needed to do. Yeah, it's definitely uh, helped him in this instance, just kind of focusing more on the squash. He definitely seems to be playing a little bit more freely now. Um, I don't know why. Yeah, yeah, but, um, oh, that's good play. It definitely seems like Will's struggling to read him now. Yeah. Uh, compared to a couple of minutes ago. It's quite a change, isn't it? Yeah. especially Wolves. It was a nice shot to finish that one on. It was quite patient on it and hit with a good angle. It did everything right, really.
that occasion, Wills didn't quite read that right. He went back into the middle of the court and uh, Joel was smart enough to actually play it short. So here we go. So Joel's started <laughs> yeah. boxing it up at the right time and it's paid off. So Wills It's been be quite careful. a turnaround, hasn't it? it has, from the yeah. beginning of this game where uh, Joel was a bit all over the place. Sure about Will's shot, but actually he made it over the turn there. It didn't look as though with the bounce coming back, it was it's very good. Rule, but... Audacious sort of shot to hit when you're a couple of game points down. Oh, I'll just do that. Yeah. This is, came off well. Yes, yeah, fortunate enough to hit the corner there. Oh. Well, I definitely think Wills right now is just going to log it in. Susie, it's opportunity. He's going to go for it just like that. He's going to pull it. I think on that one, the, the point had almost been won already. Can Wills come back? It's a question. So a nice little comeback here from Wills Donnelly. He was down a number of points. Fortunate, fortunate error there from Wells. It looks like he, was, he had a bit of momentum. Well, we're back into this particular match, the second men's quarter final at the Placemakers Waikato Open. And uh, Luamba Chalisi, it's certainly been intriguing, the first two going to Wills Donnelly. Certainly very tight matches. And the third, after Joel Ascott got a little bit concerned, had a a few issues with some calls but he managed to come back in the end and uh, take it so uh, this one I have no idea which way this one's going to go I really don't yeah it's going to be very interesting I think um, yeah I think the start's going to be crucial um, I think both players have to try and look to get an early Really lead to get that scoreboard pressure early. But I can't really see that happening. I think it's going to be tight the whole way through. Yeah. It's really tough to predict the winner. Mm. Did that touch the wall? It looked like it touched the wall. From here, it looked like it was in, but it was very close. I'm not sure if it hit the. I'm not sure if I hit the line. Yeah, it, it, was, it's it definitely looked like it, it hit the sidewall at some point. But Wills has got the stroke. So you, you were saying earlier on that these two really like to both be in the middle of the uh, of the court. That's why we're getting a few little collisions as such. Yeah, well, I think um, they're both really hunting the volley when they can, trying to get that two position. And it is hard when, when you got two players doing that. Like even when I play Glenn, when I play Glenn earlier, when I play him, we're both tall guys who do like to take the ball early. Um. I mean, you can understand a bit more with you and Glenn. Okay, Glenn's a big guy. You're a bit taller than these guys, or a bit bigger than these guys. Yeah. And then maybe when we have uh, you know, Tim and Zach, two fairly yeah. solid lads in the middle of the court, they're going to bump a little bit. Yeah, bump a little bit. Yeah. But, uh, I, I wouldn't say that Will's and John excessively big guys. You know, it's just the positioning of where they like to be, isn't it? Yeah. I 
I actually think um, both of these guys have big asses as well, which might be a factor like, to why they get in the way of each other. They both kind of stick out when they're on the team. Maybe that could be why. Well, we've had a conduct. Uh, that's not what you want. And, uh, he's going to have to really up his... Oh, that's a good shot. Well, he upped it then. Good crowd in here. Obviously. You can see Will's die set to go straight away. He knows he's got the lead. He knows he's got an upset opponent. Yeah, that is a good tactic from Will's. Um, when this sort of stuff happens to your opponent, you, want, you really want to get the game going and you don't want them to get any momentum. I don't think you can call anything on that, Wills. That was just good play from... Uh, well, <laughs> if, uh, you know, if the, mental, the mental side here is that Wills Donnelly knows he's got a decent lead. He knows he's got an opponent who's upset, and maybe this is a good thing that things are slowed down here with a bit of sweat. That might help Joel regroup a bit. Yeah. Three six. It is. It is 3-6. Uh, we've had so many interruptions, it's a bit hard to keep up with the score. <laughs> really? Not too far away from the hour mark either. Remember that the winner of this match does have to play later on today. They'll have to play against the winner of Evan Williams and Sean Wigan, which is next. So he's still hanging in there. Yeah, I mean, I was just thinking, this is a pretty, pretty solid squash for the time that's gone. Right. Um, it's just watching Wills play those volley drops from the middle of the court. Making, and Joel is quick. He's, he's one of the quickest moves in New Zealand right now, I think. And he's only just getting to them. Um, so it's a very impressive squash for how long this match has been going. And then it's not over yet, so. Yeah. I know, yeah, that's unbelievable. You know, to be able to play that shot and play it so well, there was no doubt that he was playing it that way. Yeah. having to come up with some pretty ridiculous yeah. outright winners just to win a point. Yeah, having to work hard to get into that position, huh? Squash. Both players um, with some ridiculous pickups and hitting some ridiculous winners. So yeah, we've seen um, three or four really good winners from both players over the last few points. Again, John not letting it go. On that one. So eight 
six. Here we go. I'm just actually watching a little bit of a replay on it as well. <laughs> well, you can dispute it all you want. That's the score though. Eight six. It's almost that everybody's holding their breath <laughs> waiting yeah. for the decision. <laughs> it is, uh, the ref is definitely in the hot seat right now. What's really interesting for me is that Joel's doing a lot of Joel, as a, Wills is doing a lot of running around Joel. Uh, I don't know whether that's a good or a bad thing, but he's having to do a lot of work around it. It's almost as if, if I do that, that means Joel, you're going to have to run around me and you're not going to probably. Yeah, I think it's, um, it's definitely... Because the shot quality was so good as well, coming into the back corner, it wasn't a loose ball. So, I don't think, yeah, yeah exactly. it doesn't, doesn't look good for Joel when he is running into the player yeah. on a good shot. I mean, I know you can, even if the ball's is in the wrong, it still does look like it's a winning shot. So that's when you've really got to make sure that you're making every effort you can to get the ball. And he's just shake that into the ball. <laughs> that actually had the that actually had the bottom of the t didn't even have the turn. That went yeah. just below the turn. There's a little concrete bit yeah. below there, and that's gone straight straight down there. It was pretty tempting to go for that shot to win, wasn't it? See the what, speed. What, what Wills has done really well though this game yeah. is he's, he's just really stuck to the game plan. He hasn't let anything affect them. And he's just kind of taken the game to Joel, which has worked really well. The energy that he's shown on the court, even now he knows he's got this match point. Yeah. He's just it's like energized a bunny out there. He's ready to do anything. opponent was, that's the other thing, <coughs> knowing where your opponent is and being able to punch it away whichever direction. Yeah, this is a crucial point, it's a very crucial point. This, it's going to be a long one as well. Yep, that backhand wall getting used a lot there. He's going to switch first. That's match. And yep. Well. Wow. Uh, well, there we go. Uh, I'm not really too sure what to say, but that was one hour and four minutes, and in the end, it is.
as Wills Donnelly winning in uh, four games. He'll go through to the semi-finals tonight.